Welcome to our first virtual Tony Cade Bombera Scholars, Writers, Activists uh, program event. And today we're going to be remembering Tony um, with Dr. Beverly Guy Sheftal, her friend and comrade. Uh, but before that, and I'm going to share my screen. Oh, let me just say, just for a lo logistics, um, since everybody wasn't able to register, we'd appreciate you sending your email to the Women's Center email, and uh, Rocky is going to drop that email into the chat box. It's just womenscenter at spellman.edu, and women's as an apostrophe. So W-O-M-E-N apostrophe S center at spellman.edu. So please do that so that we can keep in touch with you. I'm going to share my screen for a moment. Um, okay, remember everybody needs to mute their screen when they're not talking. Oh, thank you. If, you're, if you can mute when you're not talking, and I'll try to remember to say that again. Um, no, not what I want to do. Technical difficulties. Can everyone see that? Rocky, if you can let me know. Um, personally, on my end, I see a, a blue block, but I don't know if it's just my computer. Okay. No, it's a blue block, a blue-gray block, yeah. Trying again. Yeah, it's fine. Just reshare. It'll be okay. Sorry about that, everybody. All right. Um, I want to start off today uh, remembering, can everybody see that? Yeah, you're good now. Okay. Brianna Taylor. Um, the African American Policy Forum has put out a statement um, about the But um, the miscarriage of justice, we'll say, on behalf of mothers, families, and loved ones who have endured the loss of black women at the hands of law enforcement, all, all too often accompanied by muted responses from the media, elected officials, and sometimes even our own communities, we know that the unfathomable pain that the family of Breonna Taylor must endure in relative silence. To the state that allows officers to take our lives without consequences, to the media that routinely accepts that being unsafe in our houses is apparently all black women can expect, and to community members whose demand for justice has yet to embody the urgency, shock, and righteous indignation that the killing of our daughters rightfully deserves, we say enough is enough, we demand visibility, we demand accountability, we demand justice. Our lives matter, our daughters' lives matter, mattered, Breonna Taylor's life mattered. So um, I just wanted to, to start us off with um, us thinking about uh, Breonna Taylor in the larger context of the struggle for liberation and for Black women's liberation which of, of course many of us think would help everybody out. So um, I am Mbahati Kaumba. I'm a professor of comparative women's studies and associate director of the Women's Research and Resource Center at Spelman College and the co-facilitator of the Tony Cade Bambara Scholars Writers Activist Program. Uh, that pro the program precedes my 20 years at Spelman College but since I've been at Spelman, we uh, expanded the program. I mean, many of you that are uh, attending have been uh, participants and or presenters and or organizers with the program and the conference. And in essence, we attempt to keep the scholar activist spirit of Tony Cade Bambera alive, not only by teaching her her work and I'm sure, I hope everybody has their copy of The Black Woman, um, but, and also uh, inspiring our students to engage with the community and to engage in social movements um, outside and inside the classroom. And sometimes we give them uh, credit for rabble rousing, but don't tell anybody that that's on the side. 
So um, thanks. And let me just uh, mention again that uh, you should have your computer on mute. And when the speaker begins, we're all going to go to speaker view. That's what I've been, been told. Um, and I'm going to hold off on, we have some upcoming events. The one event I will mention is that uh, we're going to have three of these this semester. And our next one is October 16th with Dr. Nikki Lane. And then on November 6th, uh, we hope to have a representative from the Feminine, Feminist Women's Health Clinic. So um, with that, let me just pause for a minute, open it up and see if anybody wants to contribute something before we uh, watch a short video and, and then introduce our speaker. Nobody yet? Okay. Oh, oh, oh. okay, I'm gonna try, stop myself from saying hi to people that have arrived, but I'll just wave, you know who you are. Um, so here we go. This is um, a video on the shoulders of giants, just an overview of Tony K. Bambera. We realized when we first started doing this, the program that before we even jump into what it means to be a scholar activist and to use your intellectual artistic work for social change, that um, our students didn't know who Tony Cade Bombera was. Uh, and so we uh, decided we'd start off the year with a little, um, with us educating ourselves about ourselves. So. And uh, Rocky, you can let me know if everybody can see and hear. Yep, all you have to do is press full screen. Okay. We're good? You're good. Tony K. Bambara. Miltonia Milken K. was born March 25th, 1939 in New York City, where she was raised by her mother in a single parent home. She was a student of the Harlem Renaissance and was encouraged by her mother to become a writer. She was a brilliant student. With the support of her mother, she graduated high school six months ahead of her class. Bambara graduated from Queens College in 1959 with a bachelor's degree in theater, arts, and English. That same year, she published her first short story in Vendome magazine titled Sweet Town. During the 1960s, Bambara lived in Milan, Italy for a year before returning to New York and becoming a social worker. She also became an occupational therapist, director of programs in her neighborhood, directed a theater program, gained her master's degree in modern American fiction at New York City College, and published her short stories in Red Book Magazine. Bambara taught at City College from 1965 to 1969, when she became an associate professor of English at Rutgers University. Bambara found her grandmother's sketchbook, which was inscribed with the name Bambara. She eventually changed her name legally to Tony K. Bambara in 1970. Later that year, Bambara published her first book, The Black Woman, an anthology, which profiled black women and their issues with racism in America. In 1971, she published her second book, Tales and Stories for Black Folks. In 1972, she published her collection of short stories titled Gorilla My Love. Bambara studied women's organizations in Cuba and Vietnam from 1973 to 1975. She was interested in how these movements were effective and how she could use the information for her people. Atlanta, Georgia became the home of Bambara and her daughter in 1974 as she began teaching at Spelman College. At Spelman, she created the Pomoja Writers Collective an organization she used to help foster the next generation of black writers. Bambara published her second short story book, The Seabirds Are Still Alive in 1977. In 1980, she published her award-winning book, The Salt Eaters. In 1981, Bambara was awarded a National Endowment for the Arts Literature Grant because of her excellent publications. She would write and narrate the script for the documentary, The Bombing of Usage Avenue in 1986. 
Later that year, she would win the Best Documentary Award from the Pennsylvania Association of Broadcasters. She also won the Documentary Award from the National Black Programming Consortium in 1986. Mambara moved to Philadelphia with her daughter in 1987. While living in Philadelphia, she published two novels and wrote nine screenplays. She was diagnosed with colon cancer in 1993 and eventually succumbed to cancer in 1995. Bambara used her voice to shed light on the plight and injustices black people were facing in America. She used her platform to display the African American with dignity, intelligence, honor, and creativity. She also believed in empowering the next generation. She often used her platforms to cultivate and promote the talents of up and coming writers. She understood that it was her duty to become an example of excellence for her people. Ms. Tony K. Bambara, we proudly stand on your shoulders. For more information, please visit www.ontheshoulders1.com. I need to go back and turn the sound off. Okay, I'm trying to, uh, let's see, cancel. Give me a minute. Okay, right. And we're back. Uh, that um, overview if you notice, ended with a picture of the Tony Cade Bambera Scholar Activist Collective in the Women's Center at Spelman College. I guess I'd never watched it till the very end and saw that we're featured. But um, yes, and in fact, I think uh, Dr. Guy Sheftal will tell us more, but we believe that we sponsor the, the only consistent annual celebration of a Black woman's life. Um, and, and commemoration of a black intellectual uh, feminist life. So, um, but I'm gonna turn it over now. One of the things about the Tony K. Bambara Scholar Activism or Scholars Writers Activist Program is that we attempt to be kind of non-hierarchical and uh, communal, just like Tony K. in our practice and attempt to bring students into, you know, not lead students, but have students be in the lead. So this year's co-facilitator with me of the program is Raquel Love, Rocky Love. And I'm just gonna introduce her by reading a little bit of the recommendation that I just wrote for her. She hasn't told me whether it worked or not, but she can tell me later. I had the pleasure of meeting Ms. Love through her interactions with the Women's, Center, Women's Research and Resource Center's programming and later at the Students for Justice in Palestine conference at Emory University. I was immediately impressed by Raquel's passion for activism and social change, as well as her ability to articulate a progressive ideology. We had a great conversation during lunch at that conference and my interactions with her since have only validated my original positive impressions. She's a member of the Social Justice Fellows and just recently changed her major to Comparative Women's Studies. <laughs> and uh, so uh, Rocky Love will be introducing our speaker. Wow, my heart is so warm. I was not expecting that. And yes, yeah, fingers crossed for everything. New okay. Women's Studies major over here, that's me. Um, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Rocky, obviously, thank you. Professor Kuma for that wonderful introduction. I can't stop smiling so hard right now. <laughs> um, so I'm super excited to be here and I'm even more excited to introduce my mentor, uh, Dr. Beverly Guy Sheftall. Um, it's so funny. Uh, I just in ADW, like we all have to read a uh, uh, generous analytical character category. By Dr. Not everybody knows what ADW is. Okay, so that's Spellman. Hi, I actually take some back steps. So ADW is a required course at Spelman's African Diaspora in the World, an introductory crash course 101 on history and what really went down. So during that, um, one of the readings was by Dr. Guy Sheftall, and I was like so intrigued by everything that she was writing about. And 
when I learned that she was at Stone College, I was like, oh my gosh, I need to take one of her classes. So um, I actually had the pleasure of being excited for Introduction to Women's Studies um, course uh, last year in the fall, my sophomore year in the fall, I'm a junior now. And every day after class, class was three to, what was it, five to seven or three to something, three to five, a very late class, very late class every Wednesday. And um, even after class would end, I would stay inside of her classroom with two other students. We would just talk and just learn more about her life and just talk about her experience at Spelman, returning to Spelman. So I'm um, really excited to be here to introduce Dr. Sheftal to all of you. Um, so excited to even the point of learning and hearing from her to the point where I would come to her class on a Wednesday in the spring semester after my class ended just to hear her talk more about feminist theory. So you're in for a great treat today. I'm just going to go through her or her bio very briefly so we can <coughs> hear from Dr. Sheftal because she's going to enlighten you into the world the way she changed mine. So um, Beverly Guy Sheftal is a founding director of the Women's Research and Resource Center and Anna Julia Cooper Professor of Women's Studies at Spelman College. For many years, she was a visiting professor at Emory University's Institute for Women's Studies, where she taught graduate courses in women's studies. At the age of 16, she entered Spelman College, where she majored in English and minor in secondary education. After graduating with honors, she attended Wellesley College for a fifth year and studied in English. In 1968, she entered Atlanta to pursue a master's degree in English, and her thesis was titled Faulkner's Treatment of Women in His Major Novels. A year later, she began her first teaching job in the Department of English at Alabama State University in Montgomery, Alabama. In 1971, she returned to her alma mater, the only Spelman College, and joined the English department. Um, ever since then, Dr. Sheftal has made immense movements on the college. She's written amazing literature. Um, some of my favorites, personally, uh, would be uh, Words of Fire, an anthology of African-American feminist thought, 10 out of 10. Highly recommend. Um, <laughs> Gender Talk, The Struggle for Women's Equity, Equality in African-American Communities, which she also co-wrote with um, one of Spelman College's previous presidents, Janetta B. Cole. Amazing read as well. Um, she also wrote the very first anthology on Black women's literature, 30 Black Bridges, Visions of Black Women in Literature. So Dr. Shepto obviously has had an amazing career and she's somebody who's a very active um, individual within the community advocating for um, Black women's rights. She's also the past president of the National Women's Students, National Women's Studies Association and was recently elected to the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. So it's with my great pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Beverly Guy Sheftal. Okay, what do I need to do? Am I on? You're on, Dr. Sheftal. Speak your heart out loud. Okay, so I'm, I'm, uh, I don't have to, I'm, I'm okay the way I am. Yes, you're perfect. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Rocky. Uh, that was a, a, a very nice introduction, and I like the brevity of it. Uh, let me also um, start by thanking my uh, comrade, um, Professor Kaumba, who has been carrying this project on uh, for 20 years, which I'm going to mention. And also thank uh, Malika Redmond, a former student who's founded a wonderful organization. Uh, without the two of them, I'm not sure, even though we started this before they got here, I'm not sure we would be doing this. So Bahati asked me to curate a conversation, and so I'm, I'm not going to um, talk for a very, very long time, uh, because I really want to engage um, in a conversation with you, so uh, let me begin. I want to begin with a quote from Tony K. Bambara that captures the vision that guided her much too brief life. Uh, as you heard, her dates were 1939 to 1995. To be whole, politically, psychologically, spiritually, culturally, intellectually, aesthetically, physically, and economically whole, is of profound significance. In 2014, the online publication Feminist Wire convened a special forum celebrating the life, work, and legacy of Tony K. Bambara. In the collection of essays was Heidi Lewis's previously published piece, Feminists We Love, for a one-day mini-forum on March 25th, 2014, 
which would have been Tony's 75th birthday. Heidi was a member of the faculty in feminist and gender studies at Colorado College when she wrote the piece. I want to begin again with one passage from her essay, that is Heidi's essay. Tony K. Bambara gave me a feminism that was black, a feminism that was loud, strong, collective, vulnerable, powerful, communal, honest, and intimate. A feminism that was me and that would be waiting for me whenever I was ready. She gave me the kind of black feminism that wasn't afraid to look around and that refused to suffer fools. The feminism she gave me was heavy, obliging me both epistemologically and ontologically. For these reasons, I often still wonder if I'm ready for, as she once said, revolution begins with the self in the self. Hot Off the Press, literally this week, is the first book that analyzes the fiction of Tony K. Bambara, entitled, I love this title, Black People Are My Business, Tony K. Bambara's Practices of Liberation, Wayne State University Press. It won't surprise you all to know that that uh, title, Black People Are My Business, actually came out of Tony K.'s uh, mouth. She was actually responding to her daughters uh, saying to her, why are, you always in, why are you always talking about Black folk and always in their business? And she said, Black people are my business. Its author is Professor Tabidi Lewis, Professor of English and Interim Associate Vice Chancellor of Academic Affairs at Washington State University of Vancouver. And following in um, Bahati's example, I'm gonna hold up the, 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 the wonderful book, which you can't uh, uh, see too well, but you should order it. Black People Are My Business. We feel the same way. I might mention that Professor Lewis used the Spelman Archives, Holly, among many other sites for his research. I want to share a few of his words about the importance of Tony's work and legacy. And this is just a little bit. My analysis of Bambara's fiction delineates her holistic discourse that successfully negotiates and reorients and dissolves the dichotomy between earlier feminist and black nationalist aesthetics. Another impetus of this study is to examine how her art embodies a revolutionary feminist approach and early transnational perspective that extended black aesthetic and black feminist traditions differently and in some ways more effectively than many of her contemporaries did. Her art practices the creation of alternative communities where liberation is possible through a focus on acts of revolution that produce energy from family, community, faith, feeling, and black culture. She was distinctive among her peers because she also premised a racial discourse of nationalism that negotiated ideological and formal priorities of black feminism and Marxism. Bambara was uniquely committed to deep introspection, building self and freeing self community nation. Speaking of legacy again, Aisha Simmons describes in her feminist fire contribution, the one that I mentioned earlier, that Tony was an important catalyst for the creation of her film, No, the rape documentary, which we also show in our women's studies classes here. She tells us that in one of her last script writing workshops with Tony, 
at Scribe Video Center in Philadelphia, founded by Louis Masai, that the vision for her documentary was fully conceived at that last workshop. That evening in her apartment, Aisha conceived and gave birth to her powerful choreo poem, A State of Rage. We are also in a collective state of rage at the murder of Breonna Taylor by Louisville police and the refusal of Attorney General Cameron, an African-American Trump supporter, to bring charges against the three police who killed her that night. Aisha also finished the documentary here at the Women's Center at Spelman, which premiered in 2006 at the Pan-African Film Festival in Los Angeles, California. There are many other testimonies I could share, but I will move now to my own open letter to Tony as a work in progress, which I revisit and add to every year. Dear Tony, and let me just say that those, seeing those photographs and hearing uh, the um, bio of Tony Cade made me a little bit uh, teary, but in a, in, a, in a good way. Over the past 20 years at the Women's Research and Resource Center here at Spelman, we have had an annual Tony Cade Bambara Scholar Activism conference. We have gathered in March, Women's History Month, to remember and celebrate your extraordinary life and legacy. As a radical Black feminist filmmaker, writer, professor, activist, cultural worker, visionary. So every year, Tony, Beginning in 2001, I have penned a brief love note, a praise song to you, as I reflected on our friendship, comradeship, and your profound impact on my intellectual political development. It all began, Tony, in 1974, four years after you published The Black Woman, which is now a Black feminist canonical text that is still read, still revered, and kept in print. Your preface to the anthology and your essay on the issue of roles are as timely, as urgent, as brilliant, as provocative as they were in 1970. And I include them in my feminist theory class every spring from six o'clock to 8.30 on Wednesday evening, which Rocky referred to. Your 12 point blueprint for liberation and the work we must do as revolutionary black women is actually unparalleled. Earlier today, I pulled my tattered copy off my bookshelf and actually reread out loud to myself my favorite lines from roles, which are, revolution begins with the self in the self. We'd better be take time to fashion revolutionary selves, revolutionary lives, revolutionary relationships, and not all speed is movement. As a professor, I also like Mapping out a building takeover when your term paper is overdue and your scholarship is under review is not revolutionary. And I still laugh at this one. Ain't no such animal as an instant gorilla. I still remember as if it were yesterday, Tony, coming to your home in 1974 in Atlanta. Very nervous, very inexperienced, very intimidated for my interview with you, which was published in my first book with Roseanne P. Bell and Betty Parker Smith as Commitment, Tony K. Bambara Speaks, which Doubleday published in 1979. 
you will be happy to know that your dear friend, Linda Holmes and Cheryl Wall, who unfortunately passed in May, reprinted the interview, Tony K. Bambara, Black Feminist Foremother, in their extraordinary book, Savoring the Salt, The Legacy of Tony K. Bambara, which Temple University published in 2007. And I wrote a new introduction for it. You will also be pleased with Linda's biography of you, which is a love offering to the world entitled, A Joyous Revolt, Tony K. Bambara, an activist. In that collection are also the words of comrades like Pearl Clegg, Sonia Sanchez, Audre Lorde, and Toni Morrison. In that introduction to my interview, I wanted to capture the profound impact you had on young Black women like myself and Bell Hooks, who were perceived to be race traitors because of our embrace of feminism at a time when the F word was being demonized. I'm not sure if that's still the case. You may remember that when I asked you rather naively whether it was a dilemma for you to be both a feminist and a warrior in the race struggle, you responded with such ease and a smile. This is what you said. I don't find any basic contradiction or any tension between being a feminist, being a Pan-Africanist, being a Black nationalist, being an internationalist, being a socialist, and being a woman in North America. When you shared with me your involvement in what we would now call a global women's movement, I was stunned, especially when I learned that a year later you would travel to North Vietnam, Hanoi, having been invited by their women's union with a delegation called, and I, I don't think there's ever been a delegation like this, the North American Academic Marxist, Leninist, Anti-Imperialist Feminist Women. When I left your home at age 28, where I met your young daughter, Karma, for the first time, I desperately wanted to be like you, bold, self-assured, down-to-earth, funny, brilliant, sophisticated, a world traveler, comfortable in my own skin, connected to Black communities, unapologetically feminist. 45 years later, Tony, I cannot imagine who I would have become were you not in my life even after you left us. So five years after you joined the ancestors, the Women's Center continues to call your name and honor your work. We celebrate with your friends, comrades, students, community organizers, professors, filmmakers, writers, agitators, and your daughter, Karma, Benny, Bambara, Smith, and now your granddaughter, Zoe, who has become an activist like you and has been active very recently in Atlanta's protests around racism and police brutality. You'll be pleased to know that I just wrote a letter of recommendation for her to attend a special program at Morris Brown College this fall. We are deeply indebted to Karma for the precious gift of your personal papers, which he donated in 2004 to the Spelman College archives and the Winneman Center manages under Holly Smith's very able leadership. Linda Holmes, your biographer, helped persuade Karma that Spelman would be a good home. And you will be pleased to know that your papers are in very good company, since we also have the papers of sister warriors, Audre Lorde 
and Janetta Cole. And very soon we will also have the papers of Gloria Joseph. Finally, Tony, you remain with us in very profound ways. And we see you every time we enter the space. Susan Ross's individual photograph of you hangs in the center as well as the group photo of black women writers who gathered for Janetta Cole's inauguration as the first black woman president of Spelman College in 1987, over a hundred years after the founding of Spelman. It took us that long to get a woman, a black woman. The Tony K. Bambara Collective students meet almost every Friday. Scholars come from all over the place to visit your papers. A documentary by your brother, friend, comrade, Louis Masai is in the works, and we will certainly be one of the places where it premieres. I smiled visiting with him and Karma in the archives a couple of years ago as we viewed some of your amazing tapes, and I was able to see you and hear your voice again. A book signing of the Linda Holmes biography took place on a Friday in the Women's Center meeting room after it was published. I would never have been able to imagine Tony on that beautiful spring day in Atlanta, not very long after you moved here, when you greeted me at your back door, that you would stay with me forever. The center loves you deeply. And gratitude and friendship, Beverly. Thank you. Wow. I unmuted for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Beverly. Um, and yes, I love that you add to the letter <laughs> every year. Um, and I did not know how uh, great it would be to see, to have us all gathered. I see um, Tony Cade alums. I see Spelman alums. I see um, Sister Love and Afro Les in the house. Um, I can't call out everybody, but I mean, uh, I think under these circumstances, it's really powerful for us to be able to come together like this. Um, and, I'm going to open it up I, now. We might want some more, to... a few more testimonies. Mm -hmm. Oh, is 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 Aisha that? It's Aisha in the house. Okay, let's do that. Yes, I'm let's here. Go. I'm here. Oh, we got, okay, and good, I, good. Um, well, let's do that. Let's let's, let's go through some accountability project. Miss, mention what, Beverly? Your your accountability project. Oh, <laughs> thank you. She was um, another Spelman alum. Kayla, Spelman alum, my partner, eighty one centennial. Yeah, centennial class. Oh, yeah. Woo! <laughs> uh, wow, I'm so emotional just hearing what you're reading, and just grateful to you and Bahati and Malia. Oh, I I was texting Heidi. She wasn't able to get on and say Heidi, give a shout out. Um, <laughs> Yeah, whoo, and just, um, so Love with Accountability is uh, an, an anthology uh, that uh, for me is a continuation of the work that I started with Tony that led to Know the Rape documentary, Love with Accountability. Introduce yourself first, Aisha, can you Thank say? you, sorry, thank you. Okay. My name is Aisha Shahida Simmons, pronoun she and her. Um, I was about to say, I am from Philly, but I recently moved here to DC, uh, daughter of a Spelman, um, woman who went to school with Beverly from sixth grade, uh, all the way up to Spelman. And then she dropped out to join the civil rights movement, Gwendo Dr. Gwendolyn Zahar Simmons and student lover, you know, co-keeper of the flame with so many others of our beloved Tony K. Bambara. So I studied with Tony in Philadelphia at Scribe Video Center. Um, and she taught me the, the craft of, of being a, a culture worker. Um, I was at the time 20, I think from, yeah, 20. Um, and she took me under her wings and it forever changed my life. And, um, 
I, and she really taught me, and I mean, it's, it's, it's become cliche for so many, not for me, but that the role of the artist, the cultural worker is to make revolution irresistible. And so for me as a black queer feminist and survivor of sexual violence, I've always wanted to break silence um, around sexual violence. So I did that with my film, Know the Rape documentary, and now my um, anthology, Love with Accountability, uh, Digging Up the Roots of Child Sexual Abuse, which features the voices of 43 diasporic Black survivors and advocates. And my mother is one of the contributors in, who is, she is a survivor, not child sexual abuse, but she writes about the complexities about being a survivor and yet not protecting me. She nor my father protected me um, from my child sexual abuse. And so she writes, she comes public, which I think is such a tremendous gift uh, because so often so many of us don't receive that accountability um, and talks about the ways in which she didn't protect me um, and also so the ways in which she was impacted by sexual violence in radical movements for uh, racial justice in this country. So for me, I just see this work as part of the broad continuum of the radical work that Tony K. Bambara did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other testimonials? Well, can we ask Holly to say something about the archives? Is, is Holly in the house? She is somewhere around. Yes, can y'all hear me? There okay. she is, yes. yes. Can, can you say something about the archives, Holly? Oh, Tony. Tony's, Tony's yes. papers. Yes, and Beverly, as always, I say, can y'all hear me? Yes. yes. As always, I say, oh, Lord. <laughs> Sorry, I was at the season saint angle there. Um <laughs> As always, I am a disciple of uh, Jesus and Beverly Gosheftal. My She is not a, a boss. She's a mentor. She's a role model. She's a, one of the most beautiful people I know and my friend. So, um, and saying, you know, just to my dear friend and colleague and comrade Bahati, what a treat to hear such beautiful reflections. Um, so, hey, everybody, it's so wonderful to see so many friends and loved ones. I'm Holly Smith. I have the honor of being one of the stewards of the archives at uh, Spelman College Archives. I'm the college archivist, where we don't have to justify why we documenting Black women are important, which is a, a treat to come to every day. And because of the visionary leadership of Dr. Guy Sheftall, the archives falls under the purview of the Women's Centers. And we do have the honor of being um, the repository for the Tony Cade Bambara papers. Um, so I always say Ms. Bambara herself was an archivist because when I tell everyone there are everything from, you know, drafts of manuscripts, those bones are not my child, a screenplay of Tar Baby to every scrap of paper you can think of with a challenging uh, writing to discern, but when, when such the genius that you are when you are writing, she was a fervent researcher, note taker from all her, um, again, screenplays to books to writings to love notes to her daughter to correspondence with Toni Morrison, Spike Lee, to pictures of her with when she was a child. Um, and everyone from, um, you know, Dr. Lewis's forthcoming work to, um, uh, Simmons, you know, just such iconic researchers, scholars, activists have been able to use this uh, collection. So even in this pandemic season, uh, myself and my colleague are um, in the office. And if anyone has need of use of the collection for research, we have a wonderful working relationship with um, Karma and um, her wonderful daughter, Zoe. And again, so please just reach out if there's something that we can do to support. But Again, just what an honor and a delight to um, be able to hold space uh, with, you know, such a beautiful um, woman and have her spirit in those walls, in those archives and activated every day. So thank you so much, Beverly and um, Bahati for those love notes. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Uh, next. Hey, can I say something really quick? Yes. Um, hi, everyone. Um, it's Zoe. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Um, hey, um, hi, Zoe. I, hi. I hopped on because I actually saw um, 
um, Asha, she, she posted it. So I was like, ooh, let me see. And so I just wanted to um, call in and just say thank you. I'm going to be here the entire time, you guys. <laughs> but um, just say thank you because these past few months, like Dr. Um, Sheffdahl mentioned, uh, I've been in these streets, basically. And it's, it's crazy because I can't really go and speak to my grandmother like how I would want to. Um, and of course, my mom, um, she knew Grandma Tony as mom, and she didn't know her as Tony Capenbara. So to be able to, you know, talk to Dr. Sheffdahl and call her like, guess what? I just got arrested. <laughs> and just to be able to tell her all the stuff that I've been um, doing the past few months has been awesome. And I wouldn't have been able to do any of it not being, uh, you know, in the Women's Center basically since I was in the womb, you know, growing up and, and seeing so many strong Black women advocate for everyone has always been um, something I looked up to and I would have never you know stepped out and leaped like how my family likes to say um, so yeah so just thank you guys so much I really appreciate it and and yeah that's basically it <laughs> thank you Zoe I'm so glad that you're here and I just want to mention that um, over the years well, and first of all, for those of you who don't know that Zoe is Tony K. Bambera's granddaughter. And when she was about two years old and her mother did not want to speak, even though we had her come up to the mic, Karma, uh, it was Zoe that actually grabbed the mic at two years old. And we said, okay, looks like Tony K.'s spirit has uh, continues, we'll say. Uh, any other testimonials around about Tony Cade Bambera? Behind you, before we do that, th th this is one advantage of post COVID. We would never have been we would never have been able to to gather like this if we had been uh, in the room. So this is really amazing and very special. I really, you, is. you know, you 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 don't want to be zooming your life away, but on the other hand, it enables uh, a gathering like this. So thank you for doing this, behind you. Exactly. Oh, no, thank you. And thank you all. And uh, I see some chats, but you know, I'm not coordinated enough to look at the chats and be talking and stuff. So uh, that will have to get back to y'all later on all of that. Any can, can, we ask Bonner, can we ask Bonner to say something? Yeah. If, she, if she's still there. She is. I, I, I'd like for our former students to share what they've been doing, what they're doing and a little bit of their life who are, who are yeah. involved with Tony K. And how the, the, and your experience with the Tony Cade program, too. Yay. Oh, wow. I'm just honored to be here. It makes me emotional just hearing how she transformed your life and then both of you transformed our lives. And that love just continues. And, um, yeah, just really grateful to be here and having that collective as a space where we could just eat pizza and plan protests and do those kind of things on campus was so important. I'd like to pass the mic to Asha Grant because she's opening a bookstore in Tony Cade's name in LA. And I think that work is so important. So I don't know if she wants to say anything. Thank you, Banna. Okay, I'll say something. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, Hi, Asha. Hi. <laughs> I miss everyone so much. I, this is really, I needed this today. Um, yeah, I'm also like deep conditioning my hair right now. So that's <laughs> why I'm not going to turn my camera on. Um, but yeah, I am a Spelman alum. And um, I see so many of my like social justice fellow comrades, like Amani, Ivana, Ayana, Cameron. Um, I think like Tapitha was on here. So yeah, I... Tony K. Bambara, the Tony K. Bambara conference number one changed my life. I didn't know who Tony K. was before I came to Spelman. Um, and that's not okay. Um, and I think that programs like this um, really are, I, I think uh, Dr. Shepton mentioned that this might be the only, um, or maybe it was um, Dr. K., the only uh, conference of its kind that celebrates a Black woman every single year and and in a way that is so communal. I mean, 
I, I was an English major at Spelman and I minored in women's studies, but I was definitely up in women, like the women's center eating the pizza every Friday and doing all those things. But it was such a, it was, it was such a practice in um, just community care and love. Um, this work is work that um, it just requires so much of you and so like I can't even just describe the amount of just like family and the amount of friends and just the ways that I was held by Tony Cade and by the people that she brought together for me even just after her death and her life and legacy and Spellman and everyone most of the people on this call that I know um just have changed my life forever and um, yeah, like uh, Ben mentioned, I'm opening up a bookstore here in LA um, and it's called the Salt Eaters Bookshop. And the Salt Eaters is obviously um, uh, coming from Tony K. Bambara's novel, The Salt Eaters, that really just shook me um, to my core. And um, it's a specialty bookstore that prioritizes books written by and for Black women, femmes, and non-binary people. Um, and so, yeah, I can like put some information in the chat if anyone wants to stay connected with the salt eaters. But um, yeah, I just had to like hop on really quick <laughs> and see everyone and just say thank you. And um, yeah, thank you guys. And, and, and Asha, uh, uh, tell us how we can donate because um, we want to donate to the salt eaters bookstore. And so if you can give us that information and I think I sent something, but I'm going to send again. Did I send oh, something? Yeah. <laughs> You okay. said a lot. You okay? You okay. Said well, I'm, gonna send, I'm gonna send again. And so Ayana, Ayana and put it. the link out there, Doctor Chef. Yeah. Ayana good. Spencer just put the link out there, the GoFundMe link. Thank you, Ayana. Good. Spencer. Okay, good because I haven't good. said anything, and payday good. is coming up. Yes. So. Yes. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Yeah, I we raised sixty five thousand dollars for this bookstore, and oh my goodness. goodness. Yeah, beautiful. In less than a week, and um, I think now we're at eighty-two thousand dollars for this. Oh my week. goodness! Yay. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yay. Thank you guys so much. Everyone will have to come when it's safe. And Lacante says, uh, "Conditioning your hair is a black woman's praxis." Thank you, uh, Doctor Lacante. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Anyone else in the testimonial? Wow. Section. Before we move on to discussion, I, I would like to hear um, about the new book from its author. Dr. Lewis, is it? Who is yes. it? Yeah. Dr. Lewis. I don't know if Dr. Lewis is on here, though. I'm here. Hey, how's everyone oh, doing? Goodness. Oh, great. Hello. My hey. goodness. I, I hey. just thought I'd sit back quietly and uh, just well, kind of no, can't do that. <laughs> revel in the moment, you know. Um, I, you know, I, I, I've been carrying Tony around with me since 2002 or before that. You know, just working on just her work influencing how I, how I conduct my life. And uh, I want to thank um, you know Holly and Beverly for their support as I've come back and forth through Atlanta over the years. And Louis Masai opened his home to me. And uh, Zoe, I met your mom during one of my visits uh, to uh, do some research. And, uh, you know, that's the closest I ever got to Tony. So I just, all I do is just, uh, all I've done over the years is ask, listen to stories just like this. But um, uh, so the book is, you know, Black People Are My Business, Practices of Liberation and Her Work. And the title comes from Tony, you know, and the book is driven through her ideas and words, and uh, you know, as 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 uh, as the the racism and the uh, the uh, the violence continues to uh, peak right now in our society. I mean, it's long been going on for centuries, but uh, at this present moment, you know, I'm just you know thinking about uh, all of her work and the, the lessons that she offers and a reminder of, uh, you know, the work that we have to do and how we go about it. And, um, and, it, and it's, it's really, you know, the youth, 
and the elders, right? And so, you know, Ancient to the Future, her work is really centered in that and us you know, really working together, uh, forming communities, sister to sister, brother to sister, you know, and understanding that, uh, you know, as Tony said, we are really, we are at war and every day you see the war is over truth and people keep murking it up so that you don't even get to well, what is really the truth? What is the truth? Because if we can put the truth on the table, then we can walk it down. So, you know, the whole book is, a, is really, you know, it's, it's, you know, Tony's ideas really drive it. And uh, there's so much more work that needs to be done as everybody here knows uh, around her as a, as a, uh, as a uh, filmmaker and, you know, uh, just, you know, in general, you know. So, you know, that's what the book is, is really trying to lay out, you know, her liberation uh, impulse and how I think it's a part of everything that we need to do uh, as, uh, as Black people in this society to, uh, to free ourselves on every level. And I think her work really does that. And it really focuses on, um, you know, the process. I always think about The Apprentice as an example, you know, where we have to stay humble and we're constantly doing the work of being humble and listening to people and being patient and literally cleaning up the kitchen. That's, that's liberation work, right? Because <laughs> we have these high ideas of what it means. <laughs> And it's like, no, nah, the, the liberation work is back in the kitchen with mom, pop, you know, so, uh, and, and that was Tony. That was Tony, you know, with the people. So, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for giving me opportunity. Yes, and uh, we'll have to, not only uh, with the program, do we make sure that uh, we get the black woman for everyone, we might have to start getting black people are my business for all of uh, yes student participants when we all come back together. Um, thank you. Anybody else? I I've learned to give it like a minute for whoever is moving their mouth to unmute themselves. <laughs> Hi, Bazon. Yes. Well, if there's no, I want to move then to some, um, well, first of all, let me, let's thank Dr. Guy Sheftal again for <laughs> the presentation. And let me thank Rocky and Cynthia, uh, Cynthia Moore, Dana Pride Jones, there you are, um, Women's Center staff. We have actually Nikki Lane, who is, I think, still on our newest uh member of the team in the Women's Center. And Nikki is going to present on October 16th for the Tony Cade Bombera Scholar Activism Program. Uh, Nikki, are you still with us? And can you tell us about your presentation? Hey, everyone. Um, I'm here. Can you hear me? Hey. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think I'll be talking, yeah, I think I titled that talk, um, Clearing the Mic, so I'll be talking a little bit about um, uh, the kind of practices that, hey, Aisha, how are you? Can you see? Sorry, sorry. Um, so I'll, uh, uh, I'll talk a little bit about the, the, this kind of concept that I come up with around what it means for Black women to enter into hip-hop as speaking subjects. I think that it's a fascinating conversation, especially given the way that um, most recently Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion have made waves in uh, hip-hop by talking about their, their vaginas, and everyone seems to like, ah, we forgot women can talk. And so I'll talk a little bit about uh, how I think that it's, it, I, I'll describe it as, a dis, as distractions, but there's these ways that, that Black women's voices are often, we just can't hear them uh, because we're not really listening to what they have to say on a regular basis. And therefore it's very difficult to understand um, the kind of practices that they engage in in order to become actual speaking subjects within the context of hip hop. So yeah, uh, that's just my inarticulate way of saying come on October 16th and I promise to have yes. a way better uh, statement of what I'll be doing then. 
Welcome, to, welcome to, to, the, to the Women's Center. Yes. I'm excited. <laughs> I wish we could welcome you with food at, like we normally do, but we'll yeah, have I wish, I, Me too. <laughs> yeah. We will uh, when we can all be together. Yes. Uh, I thought I saw Michelle Wilson. Michelle, are you still with us? I'm still here. Okay. Well, Women Engage, we mentioned Malika Redmond who is the co-founder of the Tony K. Bombero Scholar Activism Conference back in the year 2000 with me. In fact, she was a senior that year. And when I was about to give up, she <laughs> went to my office and insisted that we were still going to have the Tony K. Bombera Scholar Activism Conference. And we did, and we still do, as you see. Um, Malika Redmond, then, has, since she graduated and then got her master's at Georgia State, she founded Women Engaged. And uh, Women Engaged is on the ground, in the community, doing good work. Michelle Wilson um, is with us. Uh, and if maybe you can tell us what's going on the next uh, events that we can um, participate in. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. I wasn't expecting this. Hello, everyone. I know. <laughs> I'm Michelle. <laughs> I manage the programs that women engage in. It's been a pleasure to be in space with you all um, in, in, in this celebratory spirit. As far as things that are going on with us in the upcoming elections, that we have a number of things happening to ensure that we are really speaking power into our communities and how we're going to use that power to vote up and down the ballot in November and also what that means beyond November. Uh, we are actually have a host of text banks. Uh, we are also hiring too. So if people are interested in any part-time work as well, we are hiring for folks to help us do some digital outreach. Of course, with everything that's going on, we're maintaining safety. So everything's done remotely. Um, we are also looking for team leads, but we have a host of opportunities and things coming up to make sure we're getting counted, that we're registered, that people who are deciding to vote know the best way to get their ballots mailed off if they're doing it by mail where to drop them off, if they're voting by person, make sure they have what they need for that as well. And so of course, there's a host of other things. I'll drop my information in the chat if folks are interested in signing up or getting more information about the stuff that I shared. But thank you again for you know uh, the shout out and we really appreciate it. And we love being in partnership with you all and in space. And so thank you. Somebody just asked about how to get involved in the chat, so. Um, and this weekend, uh, you know, Spelman alums um, are always doing big things. And one of the biggest things that a Spelman alum did was create Sister Love. Mm -hmm. Mr. Dixon, Dixon um, Jalo. And I understand that you'll be speaking on Sunday. Can you tell us more about that and what Sister Love is up to? Absolutely. Thank you, Bahati. And I was just sitting here going... Ah, so many powerful things and my book is still in my head. So um, <laughs> I will glad to share what I'm talking about this weekend. Um, I'm days on with sister love. We are 31 years old this year. Oh but if I, I know, right. If I back it up, I was two years old when I started this. No, All if right. I back it up, <laughs> I want to, um, well, can you say remember what sister I'm love is? Yeah. I certainly can. I want to start where Sister Love even comes from, though. I'm class of 86. We are still infamous. And, and I'm seeing Tata Ama Saran is also on the call, and I'm so grateful. Oh. And, hey, Tata. And what I would say, too, is that my Tony Kate story starts 1983. And it was that summer. It was that really hot June summer on Spelman's campus when the first ever national conference on Black women's health was held in Atlanta on our campus. And I happened to be working for the admissions office and was mm. literally giving a tour to a prospective family on campus and saw like Tony Cade and Angela Davis and June Jordan walking that way, and Sweet Honey and the Rock walking that way. And, I had no idea what this was all about, but I dropped that family like a hot potato and played hooky from the missions for the rest of the week. And that changed my entire life. I even changed my major and um, became an English and communications major when the Women's Research Center, when the Women's Resource and Research Center was Beverly Guy Sheftall and Jackie Royster's office, right? And so 
That's yeah. my and, and the, the other piece. What did you say, Beth? That's right. Uh, I thought I say something. Yeah. And yes, and we would all pile into that, you know, 10 by 10 office space sitting on your floor. And I have been sitting at the feet of people like Beverly and Ama and Tony forever. And it's been a journey that I deeply, deeply, deeply cherish and appreciate. I'm still probably the youngest non-related family member of the Black Women's Health Project from the early days. And before I sister love, my birthday is March 25th. And so I have always had this kindred with Mama Tony and Aretha Franklin. And so sitting in this space saying, you know, I must have the same spirit because I certainly have the same star energy. I'm grateful. So I started Sister Love because of the work and because of the life that I learned, not just through Tony Cade, but through everybody that we become introduced to as students at Spelman and then as parts of the Spelman alumni and then the universe that it opens us up to. Sister Love is a 31 year old uh, sexual and reproductive the justice organization that's been primarily focused on IV and AIDS, particularly in the lives of black women. And we started uh, just to deal with prevention education and it has expanded and it has grown and it has become something I never, ever, ever imagined. We actually now have a staff of 26, Ooh. give or take, <laughs> including, including a staff of four in South Africa, where we have also been for 21 years. And Ooh. Uh, so we've got a lot of stories to tell about a lot of things that we have worked on. I'm also a co-founder of Sister Song. And uh, a lot of the folks that have come through the Tony Cade Scholars Activists um, Conference and the work I've had a chance to meet over the years as students. I even had a short, beautiful stint as an adjunct faculty member. So I was a part of that planning for a few years. And just really, really um, grateful for this moment in Beverly. That letter was everything, every, every, everything I needed. And I'm just going to say this too, and, and, and because it's been such a really hard year, but just a really, y'all know I speak French in the English version, week. It's been a massive week, but we got the news today that we got a grant that I'm so proud that I want to share we submitted to do a partnership. We call it the preferred partnership. And, and I've got mental pause. So I remember I made up the acronym, but I can't remember what it's all about. But we're building a partnership along with the Feminist Women's Health Center and Spark Reproductive Justice Now and a new organization that we are mentoring and incubating called Trans Men Who Have Sex With Men Connect because we are wanting to build a better, stronger feminist Black feminist-based reproductive justice health community that services our trans family, especially our trans men who are so invisible and those who are assigned female at birth and are not getting, so are not getting any kind of respectful care in terms of their own sexual and reproductive health. So we just got a big grant to build this partnership and I'm just so super excited. Oh. So yes, yes. And on Sunday, I'm even more excited to be spending time at least virtually because I wish I was over over in the social justice dorm on campus, uh, the social justice scholars dorm, but we'll be talking with the social justice scholars and I'll be talking about the work that Spellman is doing, uh, that Spellman is doing, that we're doing with Spellman uh, at Sister Love. Two initiatives we bought, the Adamsville uh, Fulton County Health Department, which is next door to one of our properties. Um, we also bought the Mother House. So mm -hmm. we co-own the Mother House, which is the original home of the Black Women's Health Project. We co-own it with Sister Song. And we also have a building where we are going to integrate preventive and research, um, uh, you know, preventive and research center on Black women's uh, sexual and reproductive health rights and justice. And we're bridging that with a STEM and communications lab and a comprehensive creative arts center. So we are partnering up with the Social Justice Scholars and hopefully the Women's Center to build something fantastic in the Adamsville community. So I'll be talking with the students about that. And uh, the next one is we have big, 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 big initiatives coming forward where I'm going to leave it right here because we're still building it. But we're creating something that I think is going to transform 
transform the health space in terms of sexual reproductive health. In a nutshell, we're getting ready to mobilize access to self-care around sexual and reproductive health in ways that nobody else is doing right now. And I'm super duper duper excited. Also next week is Reproductive Justice Week of Action. And we do that in partnership with In Our Own Voice, which is made up of eight Black-led RJ organizations across the country. Sister Love, we're doing, uh, the launch is Monday night. I think it's on Tuesday. We're going to have at least three um, basic, you know, vote, uh, register to vote and fill out your census kind of hands-on classes online on, set on Tuesday. And we're going to be doing a pop-up, drive, uh, driving pop-up registration uh, mobile unit all week next week until we get as many people registered up until the deadline. And so that's the kind of stuff that we do in addition to try and help make sure that people stay safe in uh, the HIV world and in the sexual reproductive health world. And also nowadays in the COVID environment. And by the way, we're also a formal research site for a lot of things around black women and sexual reproductive health. We actually have a study we're wrapping up, Georgia, so the Georgia Access to Medication Abortion um, study that we'll be releasing by the end of the year. So we got lots going on and follow us at sisterlove.org and other places online. And I'm so grateful for this moment. Thank you, Ama, for the note that just popped up on my Facebook. I, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. <laughs> wow, that's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah, that is a lot. And um, actually, one of our, our Ama Saran, you know you right. have to say something about uh, your relationship with Tony Cade. I know that when I came to Spelman, you were one of my main sources for understanding Tony Cade Bambera outside of the words and the book and the, you know, the real person. So can you just say a couple of things? If you would, Un, uh, but you've got to unmute yourself. <laughs> uh, Ama, Ama, you uh, unmute. There we go. Okay, there we go. You would not believe I've taught online for seven years. <laughs> well, hey, girlfriend. <laughs> hey, darling. How are you? How are you? Uh, good, good to see you. Yes, I'm in Charlotte at my daughter's uh, home watching her teach. I also teach online and I'm currently designing a curriculum for medical school in St. Vincent and the Grenadines to put oh, them okay. online. Very interesting stuff. Very interesting stuff. But uh, Tony uh, is and was my big sister. And I went to her for all things uh, to better understand the world I was in, how not to get so disgusted. I work in nonprofit. <laughs> and Lord have mercy. <laughs> you know, that just is often very problematic. And right now I live in the Gullah Geechee Corridor. That's coastal South Carolina. And which I love in a little yellow house. Y'all have to come see me called Yellow Mary Cottage, but I have started back doing international work. So I'll have to go to my daughter, Dazon, you know, for direction. Don't you like that? See how the world changes. <laughs> and I remember her coming and talking about sister love. Could she pull it off? By all means, Dazon. <laughs> you know, uh, far beyond anything we'd ever seen. I mm. like that at 72, I am alive to be in this. I wouldn't miss this for anything. And I discourage my friends from getting retired because we're smarter now. There's some things we know even better. And uh, I am often asked right in my living room, social distancing, to teach people what I understand about nonprofit work, women's work, and I am pleased again for that opportunity. But this just spurs me on. I mean, just listening to days on, I said, let me get, make sure my head is back in the game fully. You know, and the fact that Nikki Finney won a huge <laughs> award today. You know, and wow. I said, just remember. Yes. $100,000. $100,000. Lifetime for, achievement. 
for her writing. What is the award? Yes. It's a, for it's her a, writing. Oh. A portrait for her poetry. For her poetry. Lifetime Achievement Award. She's is it from from which um, organization? No, no, I'd have to go back and look. I just hit it before I saw this. And so I just stopped what I was doing so I could get in on this. But mm. this, this couldn't have happened at a better time. Because, you know, I like working in South Carolina, but I may as well go step back into the international domain. And Imani <laughs> gave me permission. That's my daughter. You know, because... You can't get out the house the same way at 52 when you get 72 and your child is telling you, now what are you doing? <laughs> and who's going to carry your suitcase? <laughs> you know, so, but I'm pleased. Thank you for this moment. And as always, Beverly, thank you. And, no mm -hmm. and I, um, before we uh, wrap up, I wondered, Beverly, if you could just, we had a, couple of really uh, great and powerful announcements about the Women's Center and our endowed chair, and I don't know if oh. you want the Gender oh. and Sexuality Institute, if you could just okay. update before we finish. Okay. Um, what, what, one of the things that I'm happiest about is that, Spel that Spelman College and the Women's Center program is establishing a Endowed Professorship in Black Queer Studies. Wow. Would you ever imagine that an HBCU... That HBCU wow. of all... And, and this HBCU That's is... Uh, we we'll have an endowed chair in Black Queer Studies. So let me... I, I'll just give you the... I... Uh, with Evelyn Hammond's help, and Evelyn Hammond's is another Spelman alum who's on the Arcus Foundation board, we traveled to, to, to New York to meet with John Stryker and asked him if he would support the Queer Studies Professorship. And he agreed to give us $2 million that we would match, uh, which is a big challenge. Match. I want you to know that we have raised $600,000 over the last few months. But even more important than that, President Mary Schmidt Campbell called me last week to tell me that uh, she is proposing to the Spelman Board of Trustees that our professorship be given a million dollars out of the Mackenzie Scott um, $20 million gift to Spelman College, which is mm. amazing. You like so, coffee. Mm. <laughs> that uh, leaves us only $400,000 uh, to raise because uh, John Stryker will match the million dollars. So Spelman College will have a queer, Black Queer Studies Endowed Professorship Excellent. Excellent. Uh, soon. So, uh, you know, in, 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 in these difficult times and sad times, there's not a lot to be joyous about. But Dazon just, just mentioned something that was joyous and and the Women's Center is, is very joyous about that. So thanks, uh, yeah. Bahaji. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, would anyone else like to chime in? Dr. Kay, I'd like to mention some important dates. Dazon reminded me. Okay. I want to first show you all my COVID mask that I'm wearing every day. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, if you all, if you all, and if you all would like one, just shoot me an email. Um, anyway, these are dates for, for Georgia, but many of them uh, apply nationally. And Dazon mentioned the census. Last day to fill that out is September 30th. Each county gets money. It just extended it a month. A judge just extended it a month, like today or yesterday. Oh, okay, okay. But people don't know the importance of that. You mentioned clinics. That census money here in my county, DeKalb, is a little over $3,000 per person for 10 years, per person counted for 10 years. And that money goes to schools, clinics, fire departments, roads, and highways. So those federal dollars are very much needed in our community. So we're not tracking people if they're uh, here illegally or out of jail or whatever, they just counting bodies, not your status of what, you, you know, what you're doing in life. So that's important so that people don't ignore those census workers when they come to your door, because I know they're not answering the door. Um, secondly, the last day to register to vote is Monday, October 5th. Early voting begins here in Georgia on October 12th. And the last day for early voting is October 30th. 
keep in mind too, the post office is going to be experiencing some challenges this year. You can take your immediate family members ballot to the elections office and put it in the drop box. You cannot collect the ballots for your senior citizens home. If your parents are there, they will make those ballots invalid if you do that. So don't go and collect a whole bunch of people's ballots. So those are some important dates to remember. Early vote if you can, and if you can drop it off in the elections office, do that so your mail won't be tampered with. Thank you for that public service announcement. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, a couple of other announcements. Uh, and we can, uh, let me just say, if you did not register, and if we don't have your email, please send us your email to womenscenter at spelman.edu. And that's with an apostrophe. So W-O-M-E-N apostrophe S-C-E-N-T-E-R at spelman.edu so that we can stay in touch and send you um, the, an invite to watch the trailer of The Glorious. Um, there's the, and this is directed by Julie Taymor, who we know also uh, directed the, the Broadway version of The Lion King, or did the um, costuming for the, in mass for the wow. Lion King. Um, well, could, so the uh, uh, could I say and, something uh, in, in just a minute yes. about Gloria? Uh, Gloria Steinem is, is on our advisory group for the, queer, the Black Queer Studies and has been passionate about um, passionate about helping us. And I, I won't say the amount, but, but let me just say that one of our donors is Anderson Cooper on CNN. Wow. So, Gloria's uh, birthday is also my So, 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 and, 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 and <laughs> so we, we, and, 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 and for us at the Women's Center, uh, this is important, uh, not just because of, of philanthropy, but we want to, we want to broaden our allies. Yes, and yeah. diversify. And, 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 and we want to also increase uh, our Women's Center endowment. And so we are gathering up a queer, non-binary, progressive, feminist, revolutionaries to join our work at the Women's Center. Yes. Yes. And so on September 29th, if you want to make a note, at 2 p.m., there's going to be, uh, there are going to be clips and conversation with Gloria Steinem and director Julie Taymor. Um, and if we get your email, we can send you a link to that. Uh, the discussion that Dezan mentioned that she will be a part of is Sunday at 5 o'clock, Sunday the 27th. And this is the Social Justice Monthly Colloquium. Um, and uh, several other Spelman alums that are involved in social justice work will be featured. Um, also want to mention, uh, since before uh, this, since we're still, yeah, we have to go out and vote. Yes. <laughs> there is on October 17th, a showing of, um, Concert by David Byrne that stresses civic engagement, which, okay, my daughter is in. American Utopia. <laughs> uh, we actually have the choreographer on this call, Annie B. Hi, Annie B. Uh, so if you have, HB, if you have HBO, uh, October 17th at 8 p.m., another Spellman alum, along with David Byrne, I guess he's important to mention. It is his show. Uh, Tendai Koomba is in the show, too. So, um, and do we have any well. other updates? Can I say something really quick? I'm sorry to come back. <laughs> uh, hey, you guys. Yes, please. Definitely. Yes. Um, so, uh, two, two things. Uh, tomorrow, I'm actually with part, I'm partnering with a few organizations. We're having a suicide awareness rally tomorrow at mm -hmm. Cleopas Park at 6 p.m. If anyone wants to, um, to come, we're going to have a lot of speakers. We're going to have free um, therapists there for therapy therapy sessions and then um also on i think it's october 15th i actually um was presented an award from the georgia first amendment foundation i received their hero award so uh for my work here in atlanta and in louisville so um there's going to be a um a virtual banquet for it so i'll drop the link in the chat if you guys want to register to um to be a part of that uh but yeah i'm pretty excited uh by the people I'm winning the award with is the Supreme Court of Georgia, 
and a late state representative and then there's me so that's pretty exciting that um, but, yeah, but i'll drop i'll drop the link in the chat for that as well and um i'll drop my instagram so you guys can see the flyer for tomorrow's event so yeah is that in the west end cleophas park in the west end yes i'm pretty sure it is yeah i think it's on north side drive and fair i think I'm, I'm not, I have the address, but um, just I'll, I'll drop by my Instagram. It, I post a flyer like every day. I would really um, love for you guys to come out and, and support. So yeah. And I'd love to meet some of you guys in person if I haven't met some of you. Congratulations. Um, thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. How do you, will this be available? Will this be available? You know, like I see you recording it because people right. have arrived late or haven't can come. Will this be available? Because this is so amazing. We are definitely we are recording and we are checking. From what I understand, Cynthia Moore can tell me about uh, whether we can upload it to the website. Um, we can make it available though. Please, I, yes. I don't know if we can actually put it uh, without having everyone's consent. And being recorded, I'm not sure of the legalities, but um, we can, we can have it available for educational purposes. I'm sure. Yeah. If we can't put it on the website, we'll have to find out how we can disseminate, maybe by email or something like that. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you, Beverly. This is awesome. Thank you. Uh, no, I just I just want to say uh, this is made our Friday and our weekend. Uh, go out and vote. You know who to vote for and who not to vote for. <laughs> and uh, I hope you do. <laughs> and don't trust the post office. Go hand it. Don't trust, and don't trust the thing in. Okay. And I'm getting ready to go do my walk, Doctor Chef Tall. So I got to put my mask oh, on. Okay. Okay. So th uh, thanks, Bahati and Aisha. We'll make sure that you get a copy of this. Yes. And we're going to end with us. Uh, you. Oh, and thank you to Rocky. Do you have anything you want to add? I don't know. I'm just so grateful that everybody was able to come out today. This came out amazing. I'm so happy to hear from everybody. And I just hope that we're able to keep these Fridays going. It just makes me feel like I'm on campus again, just getting that fulfillment yeah. and all that love. So Okay, October 16th with Dr. Nikki Lane. Yes. Rocky. <laughs> yes. So as Tony Cade Bambera says in the, the first sentence of the preface of the Black woman, we are involved in a struggle for liberation liberation from the exploitative and dehumanizing system of racism, from the manipulative control of a corporate society, liberation from the constrictive norms of mainstream culture, from the synthetic myths that encourage us to fashion ourselves rashly from without reaction rather than from within creation. So we are definitely in, still in a struggle. The struggle continues and I'm glad to be participating in it with all of you. Until next time, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.